Questions? And what do you think the Malaysian government is going to do about the RPK are they going to try and extradite him? Uh, secondly, what proof do you have of the links between one Malaysia and one Israel? <laughs> Where do you ask difficult questions? <laughs> Raja the Petra. Of the issue of Raja Petra. I uh, mean, how do you deal with it? <laughs> I think they want to hear you. Now, Raja Petra um, exercised his right to um, present his case. You may choose to agree or to disagree. He has been um, uh, strong in his views, but uh, on one uh, issue you cannot fault him, that he strongly believes in human rights and freedom and justice. And, um, okay, you, you think that therefore you, you disagree and therefore you charge him, but then you have to have a free, independent, due process, court system. Second, you cannot threaten the use ISA. He had been arrested under the ISA. You mean to say, the moment you mention al Tantuya or Mongolia, immediately you have to be arrested under the ISA. What's the problem? Why, why is, you know, in, in, in the various campaigns in Malaysia, in, in, in political campaign, the police will give you condition. You can say, but you cannot talk, you cannot mention al Tantuya. Apa pula ni? It's okay you mention Mongolia. Oh, that way. So I said, no, no, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the economy of Mongolia compared to Malaysia. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, that's why we're sympathetic to Raja Petra. He's an asset to the nation. He is exercising his right. I mean, if we can ensure that the system is not blatantly corrupt and the judiciary is independent, there's no reason why Raja Petra cannot return. But you tell me, no, 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 we, is a, we are, this is a country of rule of law. Law mana? Law hutan. <laughs> so so I think that's uh, how I respond to the issue of RPK. Now, on the other issue on this, one Malaysia, one Israel. Of course, I have to articulate a proper, uh, uh, craft a proper re re response to this. You know, but you must understand the context. What happened? I've been called a Jewish agent. All right? I, because of my friendship with Jewish leaders, Bob Rubin, Madeleine Albright, uh, Paul Wolfowitz, they happen to be Jews. There are things I agree with them. There's strong disagreement over the occupation of Iraq by the American forces. I disagreed with Paul Wolfowitz. So what is the problem? Did I pay them? Did, was I paid by them? No. Uh, the uh, Pemuda Amno chief, from our MP, the famous son in law, <laughs> accused me of being appointed as chairman for the Foundation of the Future. This is an international foundation, and he said this was an appointment made by the World Bank President Paul Wolfowitz. It was a blatant lie. Yeah. But these people, they can lie with, with, with impunity. Then who appointed? You say, Foundation of the Future, Mu'assasah Mustaqbal, in Arabic. Don't ask me in Arabic, in the few words I know. <laughs> the Muassasa, the foundation for the future, was set up on the recommendation of foreign ministers of Europe, of Turkey, Qatar, Jordan, and some other countries, and the United States. The foreign ministers met, decided to form this um, foundation for the future to promote freedom and democracy, and recommended some names. As in the board, including Sandra de O'Connor, the very, you know, um, uh, you say prominent uh, Supreme Court judge of the United States of America, Sandra de O'Connor, a brilliant, remarkable lady, and uh, my humble self as the chairman. Nothing to do with the World Bank. Nothing to do with the Jews. You know? But you explain, do you think uh, to some say going to carry that? No. So, in this context, and every day, you know, every campaign, in Pramatang Pau, Sumpah, Sodomi, Yahudi. It was it. And uh, so, I then, when I saw it, I, my response, my response to this, what, what was my response? I said, I'm giving you evidence. There is unknown leaders that paid this 
uh, corrupt Jew now in prison, Jack Abramo, you can look at the congressional papers, AMNO leaders paid him millions in order to secure an appointment and improve relations between Malaysia and the Mahathir and President George Bush. Yeah. Then evidence? Yes. Finally, he was convicted. For what? For the work he did as a lobbyist and for cheating Red Indians because he took the Red Indian land, built a casino and not paid. Money was not paid to the Red Indians. These are the type of Jews they happen to be their friends. Friends, they they paid millions of dollars. Okay. Then that was what I said. Then I said you take you to Epco, Epco worldwide. Epco worldwide. Huh? Yeah. Epco. Yeah. Epco. A P C O. You Google you find out. Okay. It's an American-based uh, international consultant group. Yes. But who are the key players there? That include a former Israeli ambassador to the United States, a former Israeli ambassador to Germany. Now, I'm not against Jews per se, but there are Israeli amb ambassadors who are committed to a Zionist program of vicious in the attack of the Palestinians and supportive of, of an aggressive policy against the Palestinians. These are the EPCO main players. In 1999, they were advisors to Ehud Barak. And one Israel was smoothed. Or they say they are not involved. But it's a strange coincidence. One Israel, 1999. One Malaysia, 2009. <laughs> 2009, Najib, Najib um, took this uh, EPCO. And they say they paid 20 million, I believe much more, to advise the Malaysian <coughs> government the Prime Minister in particular, in 2009. And another coincidence, one Malaysia. So I'm suggesting, now that you accuse me of being a Jahudi, pro Yahudi, I'm saying, look, you explain this case. They want to refer me to a select committee so that I can be suspended as a member of parliament. <coughs> Not easy, my dear friend. We'll have a debate if they do it. Yeah. I mean, this is not... Uh, uh, you know, again, you answer. Why is it that the Amno you suddenly become champion of EPCO? They didn't even wait for EPCO to explain. They became now champion of EPCO. So I think uh, we rest our case. All right?